Hello friends. In today's video, I intended to show you the functionality of component substitution in SAP IBP and how we can leverage this component substitution functionality along with SAP IBP optimizer. Component substitution is very commonly used across industries primarily like high-tech manufacturing, micro device manufacturing, even uh, companies manufacturing laptops and even in pharma segments. So for example, just to give you one of the most common use case of component substitution for companies like Dell, HP and even Microsoft is that they make laptops. Now while making a laptop, a laptop consists of multiple components that we need and we need to assemble them to make the final product. And some of those components are like hard disks, RAM and even internal keyboards. So for example, if there is an order or a demand of a Dell laptop, it could be the fact that by default the company uses the Seagate 200 GB hard disks. But in case the 200 GB hard disk of Seagate is not available, then they can also take the same hard disk of 200 GB, but from a different OEM manufacturer, let's say like Western Digital. So components like hard disks, RAM, internal keyboard, even the touchpad sensors, they have multiple OEMs and hence this kind of components can be substituted in case they are not available or there is a stock out situation so that companies like them don't miss on any customer demand and almost every demand is met on time in full. So coming on to the system aspect, how we can model and configure component substitution. It is something like this, which I will show you. So the screen that you are seeing here is the master data called production source item, which many of you already know. And this is where we primarily assign components that we need in order to produce the finished goods. So in this uh, production source item, if you see, this is the source ID, which is nothing but a concatenation of product, the manufacturing location and the production version. And along with this, I have around 181 components assigned to it. Now, in order to make this product, let me filter it, sorry. In order to make this product, I need around 97 components, but not all of these components are leading components. Here, there are a few components which are substitute components, that means if some of the leading or primary components are not available, they can be substituted with those substitute components. So if you see here, I have a attribute called is substitute component. So any component which is substitute in nature, we primarily mark them with this indicator as is substitute component. And once we mark, the system treat these components as substitute component and they are not considered as leading components. Now, till now we understand how are we defining the substitute components. Now, the question is, with which leading components can they be substituted to? So for that, we have one more master data that we call production source system substitution. And here we define the relationship of the leading component to the substitute. So it's the same source ID where the leading component is this. In case of and stock out a non availability of these components, in each of these components can be substituted with their corresponding substitute counterpart. One thing that we need to remember is in component substitution, I can only have one level of substitution which means if you see here 260621 is the leading component in case that is not available this can be substituted with 21421 but if 21421 is not available 
then we don't have that functionality that we can introduce one more level of substitution like more of our interchangeability that we use in supply planning today but only thing is it is up to one level and we always need to define a one-to-one -one relationship for the components that we want to substitute with that modeled i need to basically put in some substitution cost because this component substitution functionality is only available with supply optimizer and not with any heuristics In order to maintain cost, the cost that I need to maintain is in this key figure called component substitution cost rate, where we need to maintain the cost that will be involved if a leading component has to be substituted with its substitute component. So if you focus on these two line items, which is primarily the cost substitution cost rate for those two products, you will see that in the near term horizon i have maintained a low substitution cost whereas towards the mid till the end of the horizon i have maintained a much higher cost of substitution and why i have done that i will explain you in this demo as we move forward so this cost needs to be maintained in addition to the other standard cost that we maintain for optimizer like inventory holding cost, transportation cost, production cost, so on and so forth. With that done, since I have also maintained this cost already here, then I need to ensure that I am modeling my supply optimizer parameter accordingly. Hence, this is the supply TS based optimizer that is uh, that I am going to run. And here if you see, the production source item substitution cost rate by default it gets a weightage of 1 but here I have given a weightage of 1.5 to model it specific to a requirement that I have got for one of my clients now with that said now we will take an optimizer run and we will see how the component substitution works So I'll be using supply planning optimizer with profit maximization because that's what the requirement is. But component substitution works both with delivery maximization as well as profit maximization. And I executed it. Now we will see how this works. The optimizer run is finished. Now let's take a look at the planning, how the planning data looks. So if you see for this product, for this end product, the system has generated accordingly the production receipt. And along with that, it will also generate the component requirement or explore the component requirement now let us see how the component requirement looks like and in order to see the effect of component substitution we need to introduce one more key figure here to view it correctly which is called component usage and component supply so this is component supply this is component usage let me remove this and let it load so i will just focus on the components for which we have a substitution 20621 and along with that i have 2141 
So now if you see here, I could see that the system has exploded demands or the dependent demands of the component based on this order. And we could see that the component explosion is available both on the main component and the substitute component. Now, based on what this behavior has happened, this is what I will be explaining to you. So first take a note here, as I was telling to you, here the component cost in the short term horizon is very less, whereas towards the mid to the end, it's very high. Now the purpose of this, why I have done this, you, if you see here, I have loaded this both leading component and the substitute component. I have a initial inventory of four of the leading component and I have a inventory of six of the substitute component. And if you see here, in the short term horizon, since I have maintained a low substitution cost rate, optimizer is proposing or exploding the dependent requirement initially on the substitute component. And this explosion has happened as long as I have this stock of the component. And for the component, which is the leading one, 20621, I have a stock on hand of four. Hence, the system has utilized that stock as well. Now, once I come to the midterm to the longer term horizon, the reason why I have maintained a higher substitution cost is to ensure that the system in the midterm doesn't propose anything in the substitute component, but everything should be on the leading component. Hence, the cost of substitution towards the mid and the end of the horizon is way higher, whereas in the short term horizon, it is lower so that this component substitution in a way primarily impacts your short term planning horizon when you do your actual production. So, as long as the stocks are utilized within the short term buckets in order to ensure I don't miss on any demands either in terms of late delivery or in terms of non-delivery. Hence, we generally tend to give a low substitution cost rate to ensure production. But down the line in the mid term, I really don't need this because ideally all my explosion of dependent requirements should be on the main component and I should plan that way in advance so that I can do my procurement proposals or get those products from the vendors accordingly. So this is one such example where we can use component substitution to ensure in the short term that I am not missing on any orders and based on that I can use the leading component or the substitute component based on the situation. Whereas down the mid to the long term, we can maintain a higher component substitution cost rate to ensure that the midterm plans are always coming on the leading component and not on the substitute component. So this is all I wanted to show in this video. Thank you. Thanks a lot.